What's up? My name is Eric Butler. This channel is called Report and Opine. I am back and from PIX11, court throws out first degree murder conviction in Bronx Justice for Junior case. So this was a huge story back in 2018. It was national news. It was all over the place in New York City. Candlelight vigils, murals going up, protests, everything. Justice for Junior. And now they are throwing out a conviction, right? This already happened. It's not like this is some sort of weird mistrial or some out you know, outstanding circumstances. He was already convicted and they are throwing it out. And this just lets me know that as far as New York is concerned, you could have all the victim cards in the world, right? You could be a 15 year old person of color living in the Bronx, super downtrodden. And you, it's a mistaken identity. You go down. And for whatever reason, the criminal is still more important to the political establishment in New York. Why is that? Let's take a look and see why they are throwing out the conviction in the case of a man who was found guilty of doing this terrible crime. ...erased. This case holding the intention of the entire city and beyond one that we covered extensively here at PIX11, known to all of us simply as Junior, a teenage boy murdered in a horrific case of mistaken identity in 2018. 15-year-old Lissandro Guzman Feliz dragged from a bodega in the Bronx by gang members and murdered on the sidewalk. They thought he was the member of a rival gang. He was not. He wanted to be a police officer. More than a dozen people have been sentenced for the murder, among them Jonah Kai Martinez Estrella. He was a dozen people, right? A dozen people went down for this, and I guess at least one of them is the, it's getting reversed for some reason caught on camera inflicting the fatal stab wound. In 2019, during his initial conviction, a judge agreed the murder involved an element of torture. Yesterday, an appeals court of the state Supreme Court disagreeing. Now, three and a half years after Martinez Estrella was sentenced to life without parole for first degree murder, that conviction has been vacated. The appellate judge is saying yesterday the stabbing was a single act rather than a course of conduct. Thus, we find that the defendant and his accomplices did not engage in a course of conduct involving the intentional infliction of extreme physical pain. What does it mean? The legal definition of murder in the first degree requires in part that the defendant acted in an especially cruel and wanton manner pursuant. Bro, they stabbed him to death. And, and they're saying, oh, well, he only, he only did it once and not 13 times. So is not for, that, this is crazy. And we saw something similar to this in California where they changed the definition of murder. So the mayor of the city, London Breed, her brother, who's doing 44 years, can get out sooner because the definition of murder has changed, right? It's the same thing we see with the illegal immigrants. There's, there's nobody illegal. They're all asylum seekers. Every single person that comes here is just a downtrodden asylum seeker. And we must give them billions of dollars and let them stay at the Times Square Hotel. Right. They're manipulating the language in order to appease illegals. And at this point, cold, hard gang affiliated criminals to a course of conduct intended to inflict and inflicting torture upon the victim prior to the victim's death. Judges say that simply did not happen in Junior's case. Junior's mother, Lysandra Feliz, describing her reaction after hearing the news. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe. This is a nightmare. He killed my son. They are gang members. They are criminals. A lawyer for Martinez Estrella saying, quote, the appellate division did what the law required. There was simply no evidence that could have possibly satisfied the elements of first degree murder on the theory of torture. Well, how could that be, though? Because the conviction already happened. Right. So there was apparently there was enough evidence for him to get convicted. And this guy. This gangster, this Bronx gangster has a good enough lawyer to file an appeal and get off. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming he's not just going to walk out of jail. But how did this happen? Spokesperson for the Bronx District Attorney's Office telling us that the defendant still stands convicted of second degree intentional murder for which he was sentenced to 25 years to life, as well as conspiracy and gang assault. OK, so he's still so he's not doing life. He's going to do 25 years. Uh, I guess so. I, I guess that I mean, look, it could be worse. But it just goes to show you that they literally do not care. Junior Guzman, who apparently wanted to be a cop, right? I don't know. I, who knows if that's real? Who know? Everything is up. You know, everything is still on the table, right? We don't know what's lies. We don't know what's truth. It's literally impossible to figure out. But this guy, this kid, this 15 year old kid was supposed to be every single thing that this establishment goes to bat for. And his killer 
walk. Okay, not walk. That's that's completely wrong. He did not walk. But they reverse a conviction because they didn't torture him enough. I mean, he was 15 years old. Getting stabbed once, as far as I'm concerned, could be considered torture. But, you know, I'm no lawyer. I'm no public defender. I'm no DA. I'm no Soros-funded Alvin Bragg. So I have no place to talk about it. But this is incredibly sad, especially when you remember Everything, I mean, literal justice for Junior everywhere, murals, news stories nonstop for like six months in 2018 from summer all the way to winter when it, I mean, it happened, I believe in June or July and they were running the story for months. It was a huge thing. And now, oh, well, it, it wasn't that bad, right? So rather than life, he's going to get 25. It, it's just weird. And this is, well, it's not the end of the world, right? You know, who knows what's going to happen to this guy in prison? He's got he's got a long sentence to serve. But it just goes to show you that, A, of course, they are not really going to bat for the people they claim to be going to bat for. They are 100 percent going to bat for criminals. Right. We always hear stories about, oh, the conditions up at Rikers Island are so inconvenient. Meanwhile, you can't, you know, walk down the train platform without threats of getting pushed. You can't shop at a CVS without a dog standing in front. Right. So. Just living in the city is inconvenient enough, but they're worried about the prisoners because they constantly are going to bat for the absolutely wrong people. Another story about the um, the sex workers, right? The, the woman, one of these representatives literally said that the sex workers in her district were mostly undocumented trans women, basically meaning illegal men dressed up as women. So they're constantly going to bat for the wrong people. But why? Why is it, right? I mean, it was justice for Junior everywhere. You get justice, you get a conviction, and then reverse it, right? Is anybody going to cry about this? Are we going to see any protests? Uh, obviously, the, I mean, I mean, quite literally, the mom will cry about this, and I mean, no, no shots at her. Obviously, that's, it's incredibly sad what happened. But is anybody going to be out protesting? Are we going to see any more vigils? Are we going to see anybody pushing, a back, pushing back against this incredibly corrupt establishment that has... Is, is jumping through hoops for illegals and gangsters nonstop, right? I mean, why on earth would anybody in New York continue to play by the rules? It just doesn't make sense anymore. But thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe.